Circular and Linear Economies. Today at Waste Your Education, we're here to learn about what these two economic systems are, some of their advantages and disadvantages, how and how we can use them and how we can think about them to design our own products in the future. We'll start off by kind of just a quick overview of what each of these are before getting into more detail of each economic example and then comparing them and learning how they can turn into each other. So linear economies. These are economies designed for speed and quick processing and fast profits. They're all about the take and the make, and there's little thought and design put into the dispose with the products about this. Again, these are economies that are meant to be fast. There's not much long-term thinking in any of the steps involved. An easy example to think about with this is fast fashion, where the goal is to quickly design a product and get it out there. Circular economies, make, use, reuse, recycle, recapture. They're all about maximizing the value from the resources we get and making sure that we get the most amount out of the products that we have extracted out of there. They don't necessarily need recycling to be a circular economy, and we'll dive into that a little bit deeper in following slides. Linear economies. So going by a step-by-step -step breakdown of each of the stages of a linear economy, along with an example we'll go over. First, step one, raw material extraction. In this example, we're going to be looking at a glass jar. Our raw material extraction is the harvesting of the materials needed to make glass in our jar from nature. In this case, it would be sand, a quick dredging of sand out of um, some lakefront area. Manufacturing and production, step two. This is about turning those raw materials into our product. So this would be heating our sand to turn it into a glass to be used for something else. And then also the shaping of it. So we might just get glass, but it can be shaped more precisely into a soda bottle. Packaging and distribution. We've taken our soda bottle, we filled it with whatever soda, we've capped the lid, and now it's going to be shipped out. The distribution is very important. It's about how far it's going. Sometimes in linear economies, products are bouncing all around in that distribution stage. Usage, just drinking our soda, disposal, throwing it in the trash. Look at this in more detail on how it relates to a circular economy, but that's just a brief overview of a linear economy. Circular economies. So this has all the same steps of a linear economy, but there's different design principles that go into each step along with different thought that goes in each one. We'll start in the same point, extraction. The difference is in the extraction that we would look at in a linear economy, it's about speed. It's about getting the most resources. In our circular economy, it's about responsible extraction. So instead of dredging up all that sand and maybe destroying a lake like we had used in the first example, we are going to look where we can take sand from and where that impact can be minimized. We also might look at hey, is there other ways to get this sand that may not be from nature? Um, that'll kind of tie into our recycling later on when we get there. Uh, manufacturing to consider life cycle. So again, unlike linear economies where I'm just manufacturing to sell the product, when I'm manufacturing in a circular economy, I am thinking about the end case of what's going to happen with my product. So again, if I'm manufacturing a plastic bottle, I'm putting on recycling symbols on there so that at the end of life of my plastic bottle, there's a way for it to circulate and re-enter into the economy. If I'm not concerned with that, I'm going to put no labeling. I'm just going to put my product out. Once it's in that use stage, it's not my problem anymore. But if I'm doing it in a circular fashion, I'm considering what happens of its disposal. I might also be considered, unlike fast fashion, maybe about more something that's more durable and longer lasting as well. So manu yeah, manufactured to consider life cycle just means when you're making that product, you're thinking about all of its steps, which include that extraction, and they include the recycling, the, what happens after the product's done being used for its first purpose. Second, uh, third, I say, minimized packaging and local distribution. Minimized packaging, fairly simple, not having all the extra uh, bits and bobs of plastic and other material that might accompany a product that create excess waste and are the maximum value from those resources. The second, localized distribution. So this means if I was making that soda from the linear economy example, I'm not digging up the sand in South America, shipping it off to China to make the glass, sending it over to Mexico to make some soda, and then shipping that soda to the United States. There's a lot of linear economy systems that bounce all the way around the world with intense distribution that has a very high environmental cost. And it's not maximally efficient, it is just maximally cheap. And so localized distribution is just manufacturing and shipping locally. So the product doesn't have to move a lot from its manufacturing to its sale point. Use and reuse. So 
it's not just the product's use, drinking my water bottle, but maybe it's how can this product be reused? So can this bottle be refilled? Can it later, we'll talk about recycling. Is there other uses for it? Or is about, can this thing be easily repaired? If I'm talking about like, for example, hiking boots or a phone, hey, it's not just the use of the phone, but how much can we reuse by either having a resale market or how can it be repaired to last longer? And we'll talk about that with more detail. Recycled back in the system. How can we capture these products at the end of their use case so that their resources can be kicked back into extraction or somewhere else so that they can keep being used in the system so that this product, this material doesn't leave the economy and become waste. It stays in the economy and continues to gain value. So here, we're back to our linear economy example, and we're going to go over a couple different intervention points that can happen to kick this circular, uh, linear economy and make it circular. So again, we're looking at some intervention points to make this circular. The first one is what we just were talking about, recycling. So again, it's taking that disposal stage and turning a waste product back into the raw materials, often by some reprocessing. So again, if it's glass, it needs to be crushed down into back into a sand-like product. If it's plastic, it needs to be kind of heated and separated. But again, this recycling is taking away disposal, taking away waste generation, and turning it back into a raw resource. Our next step is remanufacturing. Again, we're taking away waste, but remanufacturing. So this is quite similar to recycling, but instead of having to break the product back up into its raw material form, it can be made in something new. An easier example one can think about for remanufacturing is uh, often with metals. Metals don't need to be repurified often. It depends if they have packaging on the outside that might require some more processing. But if it's just a pure metal or pure glass, I can be remanufactured, can be reheated and reshaped into something new. Remanufacturing and recycling come hand in hand. Next, reuse. So again, this is really cutting away the disposal step and keeping something in that usage step. So again, that's constantly refilling that water bottle. It doesn't need to be for the same material. Could have been a soda bottle. Now it's a water bottle. But this is just keeping something in that usage stage, preventing it from becoming waste by designing it to be that way. Plastic water bottles can be reused, but they're more designed to be recycled. Um, some things can fit in both. Well, the, if it's recyclable plastic. So our reuse stage is really just all about keeping a product in that usage. Now, other parts of that reuse might involve some other steps. These would be repair, repurposing, and regifting. These are all different methods to keep something in usage to reuse something. So repair, pretty simple. Okay, I've scratched my phone. It needs repairs for me to continue using it optimally. Okay, I've, you know, my shoe, the sole of my shoe is falling off. I need to rebind that so I can keep wearing these same shoes. I'm repairing them so they can stay in usage. Repurpose, this is turning that empty glass soda bottle into a vase for flowers instead or from plant life. It's keeping the same object, not having to do any remanufacturing, so like changing of what it is, but just repurposing it for something else. A very important. Regift. This is, hey, I've outgrown my shirt. I can no longer use it. It doesn't need to become waste. It's still a good shirt, but I can resell it, regift it, or I can give it to my younger brother. I could sell it to a used clothes store, and it can stay in the economy. Very important. All of those factor into reuse. Next, return refill. These somewhat fit under the reuse stage, but they involve kicking a product back to the distribution network it originally came from. A classic example of this is glass milk cartons. You use it, you leave the glass cartons out there, they're recollected, they're refilled with milk, and they're redistributed out. Um, return and refills are just really a different relationship where the product is going to keep going back to the distributor for continuous use and to stay active in the economy. Where our other reuse cases have to do with entering different markets or just cycling back in the same. Our last example is kind of a unique example of recycling, which is compost, which is turning organic matter back into the base nutrients for plants. In many ways, you can think of it like recycling. You're turning this end product back into its initial raw resources, um, and it's very unique to plant life. I view it quite the same. So speaking of our nature, we're going to go over just an example of how nature designs itself to be a circular economy. We'll start here with our apple tree. We'll start all the way on the left, actually, with our apple seedling. Apple seedling starts in nature. It harvests some nutrients from the soil, some sunlight, some CO2, continues to grow itself with those minerals and nutrients into a big, strong apple tree. When the apple tree is healthy enough, it's going to start producing apples. And apples, anything in a circular economy, are designed to be disposed. They have their own design so to be thrown away. Actually, any fruit is designed in some ways to be disposed. An apple is designed for a customer, someone to eat. 
It's designed for animals to eat, and it's designed to be eaten and moved away as a form of seed dispersal. That just means it's a way for the apple to get its seeds very far away from the tree that can't move. So the apple's designed to be disposed, discarded somewhere in nature, and the base, the nutrients left around from that apple core are enough to help provide growth and are recycled back into that next seedling to help continue growing. There's many examples of natural circular economy uh, principles, and there's many throughout history. It's a very important part of human history and resource management because it's all about maximizing the value of those resources. Again, we're going to look a little bit more at our natural example and then show how it mimics in society before we dive deeper into some good examples of circular economies. So we'll start in the middle, our resources. Again, we have our raw resources, so nutrients, minerals, vitamins, things absorbed into those first level producers, our plants. Um, they're going to absorb those minerals, the CO2, the sunlight, and they're going to turn that into energy for themselves and to grow for themselves. Then they'll be eaten by consumers, first order, herbivores, second order, omnivores or carnivores, and then up in that food chain as I turn around. Again, these same resources are just moving through these different stages with maybe a little bit loss in between. Then we get to our restoration. These are our decomposers, our detrivores. They are animals or plants that help eat already dead things and help break them down. They take some nutrients for themselves, just like a recycling plant makes some value for itself, and they help turn those resources, they turn those consumers or other used things back into resources for further usage. That is our kind of circular economy on the nature side. On the human side, we get our resources that get moved over to production. They're made into useful products. They're kicked over to consumption or usage. But then there's the very important part that is often lacking in linear economies, which is that waste management. How can we turn these end products and turn this waste back into valuable resources? Because most waste started with a lot of value and it still has a lot of value. It just needs to be managed and used properly. You might be able to think of some examples of something you might have thrown away that can be turned around into a lovely resource. So we're going to go over some of the common models, business models for circular economies, starting off with our first example, circular supplies. These are our glass, our plastic, our paper, our metals. They are products that are intentionally made from materials that can be easily recycled once the product is finished. So again, I might have a product that's designed from recyclable materials, like a glass bulb, but that's not as much of a circular supply because it's not easily recyclable, at least with current uh, facilities. But a plastic water bottle, a glass jar, a metal can that doesn't have plastic in it, combined materials like a light bulb are harder to recycle. These are things that are made easily recyclable materials and are the end product is made also to be easily recyclable. One can make a product from recycled materials, but they can also make it not to be recyclable. This would still fit underneath there, um, just wouldn't be as circular. Our next part, resource recovery. So these are businesses that are about resource capture and resource repurposing. So not recycling, not remanufacturing, repurposing or capture. So this is again our waste management. So hey, what can we do to capture all the glass that goes out and make sure it gets recovered back? Those could be those return and refill systems we talked about with glass jars. These could also be just recycling plants and recycling bins are part of resource recovery, but they're also resource recovery is also repurposing. So this is taking used old tires, filling them with cement to be building material, filling them with dirt to be plant beds. So that's resource recovery. It's preventing waste from staying as waste and leaking in the environment and turning it back into resources. Product life extension. This is again, how do I keep the product in that usage side? So as it might decay a little bit and might end up as waste, something to be disposed of, how can I keep something being used? So that's repairing, upgrading, and reselling. So repairing, okay, my phone's screen scratched. I'm going to might have to replace the glass or can it be polished out? Upgrading, okay, my computer, I'd love to continue using it, but it's old and the memory on it's a little bit low. How can I upgrade it? Can I add more memory or do I need to add some external memory to my computer so I can continue using it and continue getting value without making waste? Reselling, my shirt, I've outgrown my clothes. I don't have any use for them anymore. They're a waste. Can I resell them back to someone else so they can continue to be used in the economy? Sharing platforms. Now, again, these are all about maximizing use of resources. So sharing platforms are a communicative platform that just allows people to extract the maximum value of a resource. 
A classic example of this is kind of Airbnb. Okay, you have a house. But when you're not using the house, in some ways, almost like a waste product, it's not generating any value. Is there a way to take these unused spaces and through having a sharing platform, having someone share them to get more value? Hey, you might be able to be afford a car, but you can rent a car at a lower rate um, from someone who's not currently using their car because whatever reason they have many cars, they're out of town. There's a variety of reasons. So sharing platforms are just a way to kind of spread the ownership of something. Products as a service. Sharing platforms, products as a service, they tend to go hand in hand. These are pay as you use arrangements. Uh, an example I was just going to talk about with this is tool use. Sometimes there are specific work tools where you can rent them to use because you might not have the money to upfront buy them, or you might not have the usage case to get the most value out of this product should you buy for yourself. An example I have used in my life when I was younger is to go for some formal dances when I was young. I didn't have very fancy dress clothes, but I could rent these clothes for a brief period of time because I didn't need them in the long run. I was still growing too. Um, but this way I can get this product, I can get my value from it, and then it can be used on other people. So we're getting the maximum value out of all the resources we invested to make this nice suit. Um, but it's going to be shared through many people as a pay-as-you-use arrangement. These latter two examples might not be as straightforward for circularity, but again, circularity is not just about recycling and reusing. It's about getting the most usage out. And to get the most usage, we need recycling, we need to reuse, we need to repurpose, but sometimes it's also about sharing or finding an arrangement that gets the most value to the most people for these products. I hope with today's Waste Hero lesson, you've learned a little bit about circular economies and linear economies. You can certainly learn more at our website, wastehereducation.com. And I hope you have some great ideas and a great day.